How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday night. It is the Earthmaster out here, 9.53 p.m. California time, November 8th, 2025. Latest activity here on the globe. Uh, looks like a 1.5 earthquake across California. Uh, man, notice Japan over here. That is quite a bit of earthquake activity ramping up here uh, just today alone. Got uh, some major adjustment taking place here. It is into the Japan Trench. This is a region that had that 9.1 back in 2000, uh, 2011. Uh, I don't think we've had enough time there to build up enough stress for a big earthquake, but uh, something is definitely brewing down here. A uh, bunch of fives, an unusual amount of earthquake activity uh, with really no main quake here. Now, whether this could be some aftershock activity from that 9-pointer years ago, who knows, but... The sequence of events here look like we're leading to something possibly bigger uh, in the area. Um, I'll be surprised, but, uh, you know, there's been so many fives out there. The largest looks to be a 5.6. Uh, but all of these, you know, just after midnight. Pretty recent. Uh, the last one being a 4.5 further up north, away from that cluster area. Uh, so we do need to watch this region along the Pacific Plate as it's showing uh, definitely some interesting activity. I'm waiting for the adjustment to take place down here across the Nankai Trough. Uh, that's a major subduction zone down here across the south coast of Japan. Either way, watch this closely. I think it may be leading into something bigger. How much bigger? Who knows? But that's the same area that had the 9.1, you know, just back in 2011. Uh, New Zealand getting some deeper activity underneath the region, it looks like. Maybe the southern end here of the Kermadec Trench. Uh, Four-pointer and a couple other threes in there. Got a little shallow adjustment up here across the Tonga Trench. Uh, surprised it took this long, but uh, we've seen a lot of deep activity here recently. Uh, and most of that, uh, well, it looks like there was a newer one in there today. So uh, either way, things uh, pretty busy out here. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the uh, West Coast, California region. Actually, we're going to start up here in the Pacific Northwest. A couple smaller earthquakes out there in the last 24 hours. I don't see anything big over here along the Blanco Fracture Zone. We had two earthquakes today, 3.2 and a 3.2. Uh, we've had a couple out here in the last week. Of course, that's a major subduction zone over here, the Cascadia Subduction Zone. This is a strike slip boundary here. Normally will further intensify pressure down here across this area of the Cascadia subduction zone. Now let's go check out Trimmer. Slow slip events here tonight. See what we're looking at. No surprise. I mean, that's definitely uptick. 159 epicenters of slow slip events right down here where you, where you would expect to see the strain building up. Right? We've had a couple earthquakes here. The general plate stress here can go a couple different ways, but mainly points down here in this general fashion. Uh, and, of course, that's uh, right where the uh, slow slip events are. We can see it out over here. So a little bit of uptick going on, 159. Watch the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. We can see a partial rupture out there. doesn't always have to be a full one. We could easily get a partial rupture. Uh, resulting up, up, up into a 8.4 or so. Uh, either way, that'd still be a pretty big earthquake. Uh, California, one earthquake here. It looks like uh, around the Owens Valley Fault. Zoom in so I can get the magnitude. Looks like a 2.2. A couple other earthquakes over here along the Parkfield, well, north of the Parkfield section. It's along the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. Southern California has just been quiet. This is unusually quiet down here. Only 17 earthquakes being reported down here. That's about half of what we normally should see on any given day. Uh, normally it runs about 30 to 40 earthquakes of small magnitudes here. All these are small, but that's uh, just a low number even for Southern California. Uh, there's that earthquake up in Yellowstone, 3.1. We better double check and see if there's anything else that has um, been brewing up there as far as any uh, earthquake activity. The seismograph station right here will do good. There's a three-pointer. Showed up quite nicely. It does look like there's been a number of smaller quakes there uh, throughout the evening. Nothing big, 
but the majority of this earthquake activity will not get reported, as you can see, uh, until Monday morning there after review, unless it's above a 2.5 threshold, but I don't think any of those are above the 2.5 level. This one obviously is a 3, uh, but we've got a couple of smaller quakes in there as well. Uh, let's see, oil fields still rocking and rolling, just nothing new out there. Eastern portion of the country, pretty quiet. Hawaii, have we got an eruption out there yet? Something's going on, getting a lot of adjustment going on here around Mauna Loa and then offshore towards the Loihi Seamount. Quite a few twos and ones out there. Let's go see what's going on across the Kilauea Volcano. And, um, and then we'll go from there. Hope everyone's had a decent weekend so far. Mind somewhat uneventful, just kind of staying home, taking it easy. Outside most of the day here with the kids, just enjoying the sunshine. Got rain coming up next week, so got to be outside enjoying that uh, sunshine for a little bit. Still going up. No sign of an eruption yet, but, uh, you know, we're just about at that level scene in terms of inflation monitoring here on the graph as episode 35. So we should be seeing uh, an eruption happen there at Kilauea pretty darn soon. Let's see what we got here for the webcams. We'll just take a peek here. Yeah, still got a little bit of overfill going on. Looks like it's getting ready. So that's Kilauea Volcano on the big island of Hawaii. Getting close to episode number 36. Uh, Alaska, just a couple smaller earthquakes up there. I'm trying to see here. Still got a little swarming out there in Turkey, but nothing big. Uh, some newer activity there across the Drake's Passage region right around the... Uh, well, this is pretty close to the plate boundary there, it looks like, off the tip of South America, a little 3.8. Been getting a lot of interesting activity down here recently for as uh, larger events um, off of the plate boundary. Kind of a kind of, uh, little odd. Middle America Trench 4s and 3s uh, and 2s, nothing big going on there for now. But I do, like I say, we do need to watch this area. This is behaving a little strangely. There, there was no main quake here, and we're getting all these 5s of various magnitude, you know, various magnitude 5s and 4s and no telling how many 3s and 2s. Uh, so it makes sense here that this could be getting ready to produce a larger event. But also at the same time, we do need to watch this area out here. Nankai Trough down to the Taiwan area closely. Uh, space weather activity. It looks like we're getting a little sea flare activity right now from a sunspot down. Uh, looks like maybe a couple different ones. This being the main one. Uh, that's going to be sunspot number 42. Uh, 4274 here. Still fairly complex. That's not the latest image. So I'm going to go over here to the uh, Stanford University place here and see what we got for the latest imagery. Still looking... Uh, Still looking pretty neat. That's a massive sunspot area, and it's got definitely got that complexity in here for some further stronger flares, so we'll watch that. Down here, starting to fade away. I'm noticing that. Um, starting to lose a lot of the uh, central portion of that sunspot. Uh, so the main one right now is going to be this area right here, and I do think we have some potential for some X-flare activity. These guys dropped it a little bit to 20% chance. I'm thinking about 30%, 35 or so. 70% uh, chance for M flare, 99% chance there for a C flare. No major roars there in the forecast. Um, that never really came to play, at least not as they had planned. There could be some unsettled conditions there throughout the next couple nights, but I don't think it's going to be much. Uh, let's see, no major coronal holes facing us, and there is that sunspot. Beautiful, 4274, just a massive coverage area, and quite complex as well. Uh, nothing major going on there for the Storm Prediction Center. Looking pretty quiet out there across the board. Uh, we do have a pretty big storm coming up here in, um, well, next week here for Northern California and Southern California. It looks like Wednesday. Uh, should be the date. That's a little bit different here. That uh, it's got more of a northwestward direction here, moving out of the northwest. Let's see what Southern California looks like. It does look like Southern California get in. This has changed quite a bit though, uh, since the original models. Uh, so this could switch back. 
Let's see what the ECMWF model is pointing at. See, these guys have more of a southern flow, moisture tapping it, tapping in from the Pacific. Look at those red, yellow and red and orange um, rates there, indicating some pretty heavy rainfall. Um, and that covers, like I say, a good portion of Northern California all the way down to Southern California. So the ECMWF model is definitely more aggressive when it comes to uh, this storm coming up here uh, Wednesday into Thursday and Friday. So we'll definitely uh, watch that. Total accumulated precipitation runs. There you go. Pretty decent. That's just a little estimate there, but probably uh, get around an inch and a half or so around uh, Chico. Of course, more up in the mountains, and uh, we'll get quite a bit of snow as well. Um, where's our snow at? Uh, doo -doo -doo. I guess I'm not going to be able to check that. But anyway, yeah, so we got a decent storm coming up, folks. I'm going to call it. Um, don't be surprised to see an earthquake there around Japan just because of the, the way things are behaving. Definitely got the uh, all the the telltale signs of a, a, a bigger quake brewing in the area. A couple earthquakes there on Yellowstone, as you can see. Nothing big, but we are getting a little bit of uptick here this evening. We'll continue to watch that. We'll keep the uh, seismograph stations as is. That way they're... Uh, they're pretty much covering all the important areas right now. All right. Enjoy your Saturday night or what's left of it. We'll see you guys out here for the uh, Sunday morning update.